Hello everyone and welcome for a new tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this painting ad prima, which means wet on wet in one painting session. I'm going to guide you through my process and more specifically focus on the mindset of the ad prima approach. I'll try to divide my process in five simple steps to help you in your own paintings. Conceive, start, control, relax and finish. Now, when I say easy steps, I'm not saying that they make painting easy, but that they are easy to understand and to start implementing in your method. After that, painting is never easy, but at least with these five steps, it's easier for you to just jump right in and just start painting. The more you paint, the better you become. So let's just start with uh, step one. Step one, conceive. Step one happens before you even start. Not all ideas are good for a la prima painting, especially if your plan is to paint in one go. Some subjects are just too intricate, too detailed. There is too much perspective in architecture to be painted in one session. So make sure you pick a subject that can be painted with relative ease. Big surfaces are also not ideal choose relatively small canvases that can be painted in one day. Also, be realistic and consider your skill level with honesty. Choose a reference picture or a model you can paint easily. It should be something you're comfortable with or that you've trained for. And most importantly, it should be a subject that makes it a fun experience. For my painting, I'm choosing to paint a goldfinch and a golden surface of some sort. My inspiration for this painting is based on simple ideas and combinations of shapes and colors. I want a bird, a small diagonal branch of some sort, and a very geometric circle, reflective like a golden plate, slightly off-center. Again, if you want to learn more about composition, I made a video recently about this, so make sure to check it out as well. Alright, so let's start. I start with a wash of raw umber and a little touch of ivory black, thinned down with mineral spirits. I cover the entire surface and try to spread it to get this warm goldish hue of the raw umber. Next I start blocking in the main lines of the composition with no real plan other than the shapes I mentioned earlier, bird, branch and circle. I spontaneously place lines within the space of the canvas, trying to avoid to put the main subject dead center and play with balance and imbalance. I don't really need to trace a detailed outline to be honest. If you think that a complicated intricate outline is needed, it probably means that the subject you picked is not right for a one session at a prima painting. It doesn't mean that it's a bad subject, but that maybe it's too complicated to be done in just one sitting. Before we move on, if you want to learn more about various painting techniques, including the Ada Prima technique, you can check out my old painting course. You'll find a link in the description box. This course covers everything there is to know about oil painting. It's very technical and detailed. It's not designed to show you a single way to paint, but to review all the various options at your disposal so that you can come up with the process that's right for you. I've received extremely positive reviews for this course, so if you plan on learning oil painting, I'm sure it can help you. All right, so let's go back to the video now. Step two, start. Now it's time to start the actual painting. I recommend a fairly simple palette. For this one, I use titanium white, yellow ochre, transparent iron oxide, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and cadmium red, I think. And that's it. As far as mediums go, it's very simple as well. And it's the great thing about painting at a prima, you can paint with very little medium. In my case, I'm only using a medium made out of two thirds odorless mineral spirit and one third linseed sand oil. However, since it's only one layer wet on wet, any medium will work and there is no need to worry about the fat or lean rule. If you want to avoid using solvents in your studio, this is also the approach that I recommend. 
You can use only a few drops of linseed oil and no solvent at all. That's pretty cool. If you have paint with decent fluidity straight out of the tube, you might not even need to add any oil or a medium. In this case, the medium is simply here to bring a better consistency and more enjoyable fluidity so that the brush slides nicely on the surface. I start with colors as I see them and I jump right in. The mindset of the Ada Prima approach is to just start. No complicated layering process, no underpainting, just patches of colors next to each other. Kind of a mess at first that slowly starts to make more and more sense as the painting progresses. My suggestion if you want to try painting with this approach is to spend more time preparing your colors carefully on your palette than actually touching the canvas with your brush. You do most of the work with your palette knife, organizing your colors in advance and making sure that when you'll be in the zone, focus on your painting, you won't have to stop your concentration to go back to mixing. So in my case, for example, I had a small stack of red and dark red prepared for the face, a small touch of yellow for the feather on the wing. Most of the shades of beige and brown were pre-mixed with three gradations, highlight, mid-tones and shadows. And finally, I had some black prepared. And when I say prepared, I mean that the color is ready with the right fluidity and I used the medium that I needed to use before and made sure that the paint can be used without thinking about it. And this saves me the trouble of going back to the palette for some tedious mixing and preparation in the middle of my painting session. It takes more time in the beginning, but it saves time along the way. And more importantly, this careful palette preparation lets me focus on brushwork and handling the paint. Step three, control. Now, talking about handling, the most difficult part is now controlling the paint. This is what painting is all about. Finding the right brush for the right stroke, understanding how paint behaves and making it do whatever we want it to do. I think it's fair to say that it's not easy. It can be frustrating, it can get messy, but it's also very fun and rewarding. The fluidity of the paint makes everything messy by definition. So right now, in the middle of the project, the mindset is to control, control everything, control the fluidity, control the color, control the shape and control the brush strokes. The most important thing you can learn for painting is to control the quantity of pigment on your brush and how to control the softness of your touch. Each brush has its own potential and with time and experience, you'll know how much paint each one can carry and how light or hard you can brush with it. How do you know which brush to choose? Every time, the painting must have the priority in your decision. Your painting don't have to adjust to your brush you need to change brushes every time to adjust to the thing you need to paint. But there are a couple of questions that you can ask yourself to make sure that you pick the right brush. Size, what is the size of the thing I need to paint? How big is the area I need to cover with paint? Shape, what is the function of the brush rug? Is it supposed to trace, blend, flatten, create an impasto or is it supposed to spread previously applied paint and bristle finally ask yourself if you need softness or hardness and pick the appropriate type of bristle there is no need to drown the entire brush in the paint if you need a heavy load of paint just scoop your color with the tip of your brush just like if it was a spoon and if you need a smaller quantity of pigment, simply dip the tip of the brush. 
It's also important to know how many strokes you can lay down before running out of fresh usable paint. Be careful that just because there is still some color left in your brush, it doesn't mean that it's still good to use. After a certain number of strokes, the paint contains less and less oil, therefore less and less usable paint. So if you keep stroking with the same brush without going back to the palette, some old paint and some old colors that have been painted before can come back up and tarnish your color. The classical rule in Ada Prima painting is to touch the canvas as little as possible and to go back to the palette as often as possible. When you rub the brush too much on the canvas, colors lose too much of their vitality. Generally speaking, if you paint with the direct approach or Ada Prima, you only have one layer of paint to make the colors look as good as possible. The bristles should press lightly to the canvas to avoid digging into the previous layer of fresh paint. And it's generally good to use the pressure of your hand over the brush with a swift yet assertive brush stroke. Step four is relax. Once you reach a satisfying level of accuracy and control, when you feel that you are the one telling the paint what to do and not the opposite, it's time to relax a little bit. You can't have a controlling mindset for the entire duration of the project. And at some point you have to step back and realize that if things are moving along well, eventually they will indicate you what to do next so you can relax. There is a tough balance to find between being a control freak and being overwhelmed by the paint. And this stage is where you decide where to place the cursor. At what point are you willing to let go and loosen up? Given the amount of time that you have to finish this painting in one go, you have to loosen up at some point. That's the beauty of painting a la prima. Now, Everything should be under control, at least regarding the main shapes and proportions. So it's time to be creative with looser brush strokes and to start having fun with textures, thickness, and more vivid color touches. It's also a good moment to relax about color choices and composition. Not happy with the background? Just scratch it off and change it. What's stopping you? This is what I did in this painting, for example. Want to leave an entire part untouched? That's perfectly fine, especially for an a la prima painting, which is supposed to be quick anyway. Is there some detail that you haven't painted yet? How about you first step back and observe if it really makes a difference from a distance? Maybe you can avoid painting details and be efficient with a simple brushstroke. Details take time, they are all about control, but you can suggest them with a couple of well-placed loose brushstrokes. Simplicity. Suggesting things rather than detailing them, this is a big part of the Ada Prima painting approach. If a secondary part is not as important for your composition, it's okay to leave it unfinished. In my case, this is what I did for the branch and the outer edges of the canvas. I wanted a very simple composition with clear focus on the two main elements, the bird and the golden surface. And that's, that's it. I can now relax and leave the rest completely untouched because it's not relevant in this case. The branch is just here for the geometry. So as long as I have this line and this dynamism crossing the picture, I don't need to make it detailed and carefully painted. Step five, finish. All right, so now it's time to decide when you want to stop. In the spirit of the Ada Prima approach, technically, you should not have a second go. It should be finished at the end of the painting session or at least before the paint has time to dry, as everything is supposed to be done wet on wet. However, I think that this shouldn't be a strict rule and I think that it's important to relax about this aspect as well. Ada Prima is supposed to be fun and intuitive 
And if you stress yourself to finish before the timer runs out, you don't necessarily have a lot of fun. It can be a nice challenge though, but it can be also a restrictive rule that nobody except yourself really cares about. Just paint whenever you want in as many sessions as you want. Don't restrict yourself. For this painting, for example, I was lucky enough to have enough time to finish everything I had planned in one session. However, if that had not been the case, I wouldn't have hesitated to put this painting aside and take it back the next day to finish it. I'm not a purist regarding the Ada Prima method. The idea of doing everything in one go is interesting for its spontaneity, but above all, I think in a pragmatic way. If it had been necessary, I would not have hesitated to paint over this layer to obtain the desired result. So is the Ada Prima better for you or should you paint with multiple layers? How can you know what approach is best for you? I think it's largely related to your intentions as an artist. Just use the techniques you feel comfortable with. You don't need to force yourself to paint a certain way. Don't think that whatever works for someone else is going to work for you. At the end of the day, some techniques are going to feel more natural. Those are the techniques that you should include to create your unique painting process. Don't force yourself to paint like someone else. Your way of painting is linked to your personality. If you're organized and conscientious, you're probably going to be more inclined to paint indirectly with multiple layers and do a lot of preparation. But if you're a very spontaneous and fanciful person, painting Ada Prima will probably feel much better. If you know who you are, you will know how to paint. That being said, it's also important to expand the range of your possibilities. So don't stay in your comfort zone all the time. Try to refresh your approach. Look for new ways to paint and always experiment. Even if it doesn't change your approach entirely, it can give you new ideas and it can help you be more creative. That's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, remember to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Again, a huge thank you to all my Patreon members. This video wouldn't be possible without you. If you want to join the community, you'll find a link in the description below. You'll also find a link to both my courses, my oil painting course and my Kata course. All right, that's it for today. As always, my friends, joy and inspiration. Bye.